We are at Tel Jericho, the ancient city uh, where we are told in Joshua, or Joshua led the Israelites into the Promised Land. This was the first city that was conquered by the Israelites and one of the most interesting archaeological places in the Holy Land because here at this site, uh, archaeologists over 100 years ago excavated and uncovered remains of the ancient city towers. This is just one tower from ancient Jericho and it gives us an idea for the impressive size of the community that was conquered by the Israelites who had just crossed the Jordan River. Now it is recorded for us in Joshua that here in this place the Israelites encountered this huge, massively fortified city with walls many stories tall. And we can see uh, the construction even that the, the natives used where they took stone and then filled in the towers with dirt and then added another layer of stone upon layer upon layer uh, until the towers were so high uh, that the city seemed impenetrable from the outside. This is where God intervened and allowed Joshua and the Israelites to march around the cities. For seven days, they marched and marched and marched. And on the final day, when the Israelites blew their trumpets, we're told that the giant city walls of Jericho came tumbling down, and Israel rushed in and saved Rahab, the prostitute who helped the Israelite spies, but then looted and burned the city. And this episode is... For God's people, a story of great victory, uh, but it also brings with us the, the sad reality of war, that people uh, suffer, that somebody loses, and that we live in a world where war and warfare and fighting is, is simply something that is a part of living in a broken world. And so here at this place, we, we do well to do two things. One, to remember God's power to remember that the God that we serve, the God who has called us to faith, is a powerful God who is able to save his people in wonderful and miraculous ways as he saved the people of Israel uh, from a mighty enemy in Jericho. We also remember and are sobered by the fact that sometimes difficult means, means of force, are necessary uh, for justice to be done in this world. And that requires human suffering suffering that many will often question God because of, because we don't understand why it is that people must suffer. But we have a God who is so great that not only is he able to use the difficult things of this world to accomplish his purposes, but in the person of Jesus Christ, we see that God himself was willing to suffer. He doesn't ask more of us than he is willing to go through himself. And so the victory that God gave his people here at Jericho as they were then allowed to venture on further into the promised land and the hope that we have in a God who is powerful to save uh, gives us courage to fight the good fight of faith and to follow God uh, and, and do uh, what is good and right and what he asks us to do, even if it may be difficult. We may not understand uh, the human cost or our own personal cost. We know that he is there for us, that he fights for us, that he will be with us. And that gives us great peace. Please pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to see this mighty city's ruins and to be reminded of the power uh, that you have to save your people, that you are able to intervene in supernatural and miraculous ways. And we ask that you would help us to be encouraged to always follow you, to be willing to fight that good fight of faith, uh, and be willing to pay whatever cost it is uh, to do right and to follow you and your way, knowing that you will use us and that you fight for us. And because you have fought for us in the person of your son, Jesus Christ, we know that ultimately we will be victorious in him. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings on your day.